has the best overall smartphone camera of all time. When you use it, you just know it. Shots are clean and clear, take absolutely no effort at all, and work 100% of the time. This is a big difference from many other phones on the market that require quite a bit of tweaking to get things working just how you want them. And thanks to an incredible synergy of hardware and software, Google has taken its pseudo-magic HDR Plus algorithm to new heights. Hey everybody, it's Nick from Android Anged. Swiping left or right moves between photo and video mode, and in this case, there's really no reason Google should be designing the software like this. A simple dedicated camera shutter and record button are fine, and, well, oddly enough, Google already does this, although it has to switch between modes before either can be used. Dumb. The rest of the modes are found in the left-hand slide-out menu, which is confusing since the main modes are swiped between. Most of these other modes are as basic as the regular camera mode and offer no additional features. There's also no manual mode for the camera of any kind. On the bright side, Google added a new focus and exposure lock this time around, giving slightly more options than it had before. It's obvious the interface isn't that great here, although it does offer a simple point-and-shoot experience. Other basics like launch time and focus speed are great. The camera launches from cold boot in just over a second, and subsequent launches are literally instant. Google is obviously keeping the camera app in memory once booted up, and boot times benefit greatly from this. For the most part, focusing is also incredibly fast and verges on instant in the right light. Google is utilizing a new dual pixel camera sensor in both Pixel 2s, and this dual pixel phase detection autofocus serves many purposes. Aside from giving incredibly fast focus times, it also allows the phone to sense depth in a way previous generation phones couldn't. This gives Google the ability to utilize only one camera module for portrait modes with background blur, something Google Camera has had forever, but didn't do it nearly this well. Portrait shots from this phone are absolute good lighting, none of it matters. Everything that comes from this mode, either from the front or the rear camera, is perfect. And about the only complaint I can make is that it's very difficult to take portrait shots with more than one person at a time. Background blur is done gradually instead of harshly like previous generation phones, and as a result, plus functionality that really steals the show here. It's often hard for a smartphone to take in the range of colors and lighting conditions that make photos look truly realistic, and it's usually a lack of dynamic range that makes most smartphone photos not look so great. HDR technology has improved significantly over the years, but none has been more important than Google's HDR+, Plus, which combines multiple exposure shots at a per-pixel level, and with the Pixel 2, Google is taking its first steps towards a wholly independent future with the inclusion of their first dedicated hardware image processor, specifically designed for use with HDR+. Plus. The Pixel Visual Core, as Google calls it, actually hasn't even been enabled yet, funny enough, but we're still seeing the widest dynamic range ever from any smartphone, and the results aren't even close most of the time. HDR Plus is enabled all the time by default, and you actually need to go into advanced settings just to turn it off. Once Android 8.1 Oreo hits, we'll be able to see what Pixel Visual Core brings to the table, but for now, HDR Plus processing is the same as last year. Photos and video are taken anytime you have the app open, and pressing the shutter button essentially stops the cycle and combines the last handful of shots into one glorious outcome. HDR Plus processing is all then done in the background without any kind of user-facing context, unless you swipe over to the photo quickly enough. Google has been able to enhance this to the point where it doesn't just take photos, though, it also automatically takes three-second bursts of video when it deems appropriate. Or, of course, you can force this to be always on or off to your liking. Google has also enhanced the gallery view from the camera app, giving the full Google Photos experience without having to navigate to another app. Comparing photo quality to other flagships shows just how advanced Google's back-end processing really is. We rated both the Galaxy Note 8 and the LG V30's cameras very highly for different reasons, but let's take a look at how they stand up to the Pixel 2's camera. These are just a few shots that exhibit the best of what Google can offer from its camera and how much it can differ from the competition. Most shots turned out like this, and there was almost never a situation where the Pixel 2 lost to any of the phones we tested it against. Shots where dynamic range are most important are the ones where you'll find the biggest wow factor, and lower lighting conditions generally display better colors, better brightness, and more clarity than competitors. There are so many situations where Google's HDR Plus is able to pull out not just better dynamic range in terms of shadow detail versus highlights, but also in the way we think of HDR on a TV or other display. Simply put, there are colors here that are not on other phones' pictures, and the Pixel 2's photos end up looking more vibrant and colorful without looking oversaturated or unrealistic. It's this wider color range that we're seeing from the Pixel 2's photos that really make them look better when compared to other phones, and a lot of this comes from the fact that photos are almost never overexposed or underexposed in any way. The only time we saw the Pixel 2 suffer from underexposure 
was in situations that no one would ever be taking a photo in anyway. Dark rooms with either no direct light or no light at all showed the Galaxy Note 8 did a better job of pulling light from unknown sources, and the Pixel 2 ended up crushing black levels and sometimes looking unfocused. It's these situations that most folks would probably just use flash in if they're even going to take a photo at all. Subsequently, anyone looking for manual photography or video options needs to look elsewhere. There's literally nothing here outside of an exposure slider and the exposure slash autofocus lock. While the video mode features are bog standard, the quality is simply unmatched when it comes to stabilization. Last year, we only had electronic stabilization on the Google Pixel, which in all honesty looked easily as good as most hardware models at the time, but this year Google is combining hardware OIS with software EIS, and the results are show-stopping. Walking, running, jumping, it doesn't matter. This video looks like it was taken from a professional gimbal every time, and that's 4K video too, not just 1080p like most phones. It's insane how good it looks, and it doesn't even suffer from the usual stabilization jitters that we've seen from plenty of phones. All in all, it's an experience like no other, but it's not all-encompassing. If you need a phone camera that just works all the time, every time, this is where you go. The crazy thing is that this was achieved on a sensor with 0.15 micron smaller pixels, a significant reduction to say the least, but with an enhanced lens and processing, you'd never know the difference. If you need manual controls, stickers, filters, or other options from the included software, you'll just need to look elsewhere. Android 8.1 Oreo may bring about some big changes in this regard, but the best quality for now is achieved via the